3 Golden Eagles for War Thunder. Link in the description. The quickest way to stop an enemy's advance is an 11 kg heat FS shell. This subject is one I have covered before in a video, but to my surprise I still get asked almost every day how to use the rangefinder and how to shoot what in binocular view. And the worst part is, these are essential tools that really everyone must know if they want to be effective in tank realistic mode. So let's go in depth. First we must understand why the rangefinder is so important. Any object flying through the air is subject to a number of different forces, namely air resistance and gravitational pull. Don't worry, we won't get too scientific here. All you need to understand is that air resistance opposes the movement and will slow the shell down as it flies along, and the gravitational pull will eventually make it crash into the ground. To my surprise, and this is a fact I've only discovered after finishing the script for this video, air resistance is indeed modeled into the game. The gun sight does not compensate for this, and as such you will need to aim farther than you expect at long ranges. Alright, so what else do we need to know? You've probably heard about certain tanks being better at range than others. And that is the result of different muzzle velocities. The amount of time it takes for a shell fired to hit the ground is, theoretically, exactly the same between a shell fired at 1000 meters per second and a baseball for only 10 meters per second, as long as they are launched at the same angle and altitude. Of course, the shell will travel much further before hitting the ground, as well as getting there faster. In essence, a higher muzzle velocity doesn't mean that the shell will drop slower, but rather it will travel further in the same amount of time as slower shell does. So how does this apply to War Thunder? Well, since you don't get an aiming assist in realistic mode, you have to manually adjust for the drop the shell is going to suffer during its flight to your target. Now, you could simply fire multiple shots until they eventually start hitting, but that will give your position away and, on slow firing tanks like the KV-2, give the enemy half a minute to either move away or kill you. You could also simply get used to the drop of the shell if you play the same tank for a long time, but as soon as you switch to a different tank or even a different shell with a different muzzle velocity, that experience is useless. So how are you supposed to aim then? Well, certainly you have noticed those horizontal lines on your scope. Those are range lines. They are perfectly calibrated to whatever shell you have loaded at the moment and will recalibrate if you switch to a different shell halfway through the battle. Each of the lines going down represent an increment in distance of 200 meters. Essentially, if your target is 200 meters away, you aim with the first line downwards. If it's 600 meters away, you aim with the third one. If it's one kilometer away, you aim with the fifth one, and so on. But Mike, I hear you say, how do we know how far away the target is? Ah, see, that is where the rangefinder comes in. Now, you might think that the rangefinder is only available to top tier tanks with the modification to unlock them, but that is not true. Every single tank, even reserve tanks, have this feature. If I remember correctly, it is not assigned to any button by default, so you have to do that first. Simply go to Controls, Tank Controls, and you'll find the rangefinder right at the bottom of the list. Assign it to whatever button you can easily reach without having to look at your keyboard whilst in battle. Alright, so now that you have unlocked the rangefinder, it's time for me to explain you the basics. First of all, there are two different types. If you don't have the rangefinder modification unlocked, or if your tank simply doesn't have that modification to start off with, the rangefinder is modeled as your gunner simply estimating the distance to whatever you're pointing at visually. The maximum distance you can use this feature for is limited by your gunner's rangefinding skill. With a fresh new crew, you can only estimate up to around 600 meters, but a fully aced crew can estimate up to around 1000 meters. Tanks with the rangefinder modification get a massive boost to the maximum distance, up to around 2500 meters. Right, now you know why you need a rangefinder, how to set up the rangefinder and what the lines in your gunner sight mean. So let's quickly recap the procedure. For this example we'll be using the Brombeer, due to its ridiculously slow muzzle velocity. Over there is a nice big T95. We point our gun at it, press the rangefinding button and wait for the crew to estimate the range. The target seems to be about 700 meters away, but keep in mind that the crew has a slight estimation error. As to make things easier, in this extreme case, we are going to zero in our scope. Zeroing makes it easy to engage multiple targets at the same range, as it'll keep the gun locked at the elevation you've set it at. In order to zero the scope, go to Controls, Tank Control, make sure you're on full real controls and search for Sight Distance Control. Here you assign the maximum and minimum value to two different keys, save and go back to mouse aim. 
Alright, we have the distance, we have our sights set to that distance, time to fire. Now, keep in mind that in this particular case our shell is extremely slow and the target is on a high elevation. As such, I've set the sight to just a little above 700 meters. You won't have this issue with most tank guns unless you're firing at extreme ranges. And there we go! We got a hit on our first shot. Congratulations! Now you know how to find the range and aim in tank RB. Before we go, I want to show you a little trick of mine. The binocular shot. The binoculars simulate the position of the commander spotting from above the tank. As such, the point of view is usually a meter or two above the point of view from your gunner. This can be a major factor when you're firing from behind a bush for example, where the bush would be blocking your gunner's sight, but not the binocular sight. So how can we take advantage of this? Whilst in binocular view, you can actually press your firing button to automatically aim your gun. In fact, you can even hold down the fire button and move around your view. The gunner will follow. But that doesn't fire the gun. Ah, here's where the trick comes in. Whilst holding down the fire button in binocular view, if you switch to your gunner view, it will immediately fire the gun. And the best part is, it will be aimed. If you quickly switch back to binocular view, you can even follow your shell with a much clearer image than you could in gunner sight, since you won't have as much smoke blocking your view. This also makes it easier to hit long range targets, as you can easily guide a second shot in. Especially when you can only see the top of your enemy, it's easy to hit him with the binocular view due to the higher point of view. Now you have the knowledge you need to consistently hit your targets in realistic mode even while it's hidden. Use these tips well, and you shall become a successful sniper on the battlefield. If you've learned anything new, don't forget to like and share this video with your uneducated friends. Remember, one sniper is good, a team is better. If you're interested in aircraft, I should be releasing a review on the new Japanese premium Key 87 together with this video, so go and check it out on my channel. In fact, you can enable notifications for the channel so that you never miss an upload. As always, my name is Mike Zubu. Thanks for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky Take a deeper breath and give it time You can walk the path among the lines With your shattered frame of mind Or is that you could always stay We can wait right here and play Until somehow you can find a slight